What's up YouTube land? Welcome back to the channel. Or if this is your first time stopping by, then welcome. Okay, it is foundation time. We have our excavation done, as you can see. We've got our septic system done. That video was a separate video. If you haven't seen that one, go ahead and check that out. It's the Vantex septic system that I did a video on. One of these sides will get you there. So, our well is in as our well is in as well. I keep doing that. Our water line's in. We're down into the foundation. Excavation, as I said, has been finished, and now it is time to form up some footings today. So, waiting on the forms to show up, waiting on the rebar to show up, and it's a very, I would say, structurally sound foundation. Um, I went back and forth with the engineer on this one. He wanted to design it this way. It's, in my opinion, over-engineered but there's nothing wrong with that except for it costs more. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you what we're looking at. I'm gonna walk you guys through the, um, the plans themselves, show you what we're doing for our footing, for our walls, and for our piers in between, basically to hold the seam of the two containers on the first floor that are being cut out almost completely, and how that structurally is going to be put together. So without further ado, Let's get these forms going. Amigo. Oh, how are you? Ready. No way to turn around in there, right? Not right now. I would back it in, yeah. Can you get down the road a little further and spin it in? Yeah. It's a way to turn around somewhere. I think there. that drive, well. No, I think he can. I think he's got enough room to go this way. Just go all the way to the other side because it's a sharp turn okay so you can go back and forth a couple times right you feel confident right. Right. Uh, that's last famous last words brother <laughs> i do this for a living I really live right here right now with oh the yeah yeah it's it gets worse as you the further you go down this road All right, so the most important part of starting to form a foundation is triple checking your environment, i.e. the excavation area. And as I'm doing here, I'm triple checking what the excavator has done since the last time I was on site to make sure that we have enough room to actually build our foundation. Excavation sites are over excavated, so they're going to be wider than the actual area and and dimensions of the forms themselves. That allows us to work around the forms, obviously, as we're as we're going to build this foundation, starting with the spread footing. Then you want to make sure you get everything unloaded, prepped, and put in the specific places they need to be, i.e. forms um, of any kind, bar, rebar, stakes, etc. Get everything lined up and ready to go ahead of time so you're not moving it more than one time. You stand above it, it's lots easier. Yeah. We'll do like three. I'm just gonna spread it all the way around. Si, senor. Oh, I'm gonna put my gloves. Duplex or torneos? We have now. Si, duplex? Duplex! You know duplex? The nails get pulled out. Why? No, not on forms. Huh? You want them to pull out. All right, so what we're doing here is we're organizing material based on where everything's going to go. It just, again, makes it easier to get all the layout done ahead of time so it can be really, really, really efficient and much, much quicker 
when you start forming everything up. Starting with our 2x12s, if you can see here, we're moving 2x12s for our 30 inch wide spread footing. It is a massive spread footing, especially in my opinion for the type of build we're going to do. Again, a four container build, it's gonna be a two story build. Um, but normally in these conditions, we don't need much more than a 16 inch wide footing, eight inch wide sem wall, which is what we're gonna do here as well. The footing is very, very big, but it's also a foot high. So we're using two by 12s, which nominally are two by 12, but actually are 11 and a quarter inches wide. So that gets us, once we set everything level to our 12 inch high dimension required for our footing, once we pour the concrete out. We gotta go around the inside now, right? Well, we're 30, 30 on the spread, but then we got, we're gonna form these this, the same time. The, the inside. I would for now. Okay. I think we have to, we're gonna set these outside ones anyway, and they didn't do a great job of leveling, so get them set, and then we can level off the first form. Okay. I think it'll be easier. A little pre-lunch. Just a little pre-lunch. All right. There's 31 right there. Okay, so we're good from there on? We're good from there on, yep. Okay, so how does this look? It kind of looks like it, it's... It's turning in that way, so we actually get, we gain some of this way. So I think this is the better corner anyway to start. Okay, exactly. Yep. And... Also What's set a metal one and I, I got string in my bag, what? Stay measure? Tape. I got, I'm holding one, homie. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, you got your bags on, you don't have a tape? I the tape. We already started. And, uh, eight feet, right? C, this one is eight. That's eight right there. Okay, so we got room then to go that way. Oh, a little bit. All right, once all the material is laid out and we have everything organized the way we want, bags go on, we get started with corner number one. What we need to do first for this particular project is make sure that we are at least 30 feet from one of the property lines. So we have a 30 foot setback required on this side of the property. And although everything was marked and set ahead of time for the excavation, again, as I said, or over excavation happens, we gotta make sure that we're still gonna be a minimum of 30 feet from that side of the property per setback requirements. So what we're doing here is we're checking everything based on the boundary survey that was done, meaning I have stakes out where the property line is from the surveyor and I'll take my tape measure and I'll hook up that stake and I'll bring it all the way back to where we're a minimum of 30 feet from the property line to set our boundary for our first form. This is step one when you have these types of requirements especially. So once we have that mark and I went ahead and cheated it another 12 inches, set a stake. Now that's our given point to start running our corner, our first corner of the foundation. No, no, no. Three and four. Either way. I did four over there. Okay, then do three. Three? Okay. Yeah, five's your check. Five's your hypotenuse. Exactly. You remember that, Angel? Okay. <laughs> You're doing a triangle? Geometry. Ay, ay, ay. Se soltó. Se quebró. Okay. Okay. Three, the three, four, five gives you a square. A square. Perfect. It's a... Okay. You can so square. Uh, so it's better three, four, five feet. than the five, Pythagorean six, theorem. Do you remember the Pythagorean theorem? No. Yeah. But the question is, uh -huh. it's it's better three, four, five or five, oh, six, yes. seven. Eight. Either? Yeah. Six, eight, oh. twelve. You can sometimes if you do that and you end up in this corner and all of a sudden something's off, then you go six, eight, twelve, mm -hmm. and you go so bigger and then double check again, and then Cross once we get a couple, we can go. We can measure corner to corner. Okay. Three, four, five. So Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, if you guys remember your math from school. We start from one corner, that's our given point. Once we actually pulled our dimensions from the property line, we have to have a minimum, as I said before, 30 feet from the property line to be able to build a structure. So once we establish that with what we already had on survey, we have our given point, we're in a string line, and then we measure off that given point. We measure three feet, and then off the other side of the given point, four feet. And then you pull from corner to corner on your inside of your tape measure. And our, our 
our right angle will be a 90 degrees if it lines up at five feet from those two marks. If it doesn't, we're not square yet. Again, you can do multiples of that too. If you want to do a bigger corner, which we probably will do with a part of this foundation, we'll measure six feet out, eight feet the other way, and then 12 feet is our check, corner to corner inside of your tape. That's how you square up. And once you have one square corner, you can run off of that and continue to check. Eventually, we're actually gonna go ahead and cross check our angles as well with a longer tape measure. So once those forms are set, I can actually pull a number diagonally and that within a quarter of an inch should be good. Okay, so what I was explaining there was the three, four, five rule, which is just simple geometry that we all learned in school at some point. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in school, but for some of you watching, it might've been not that long ago. Anyway, so three, four, five rules I explained will get us our first square corner from which we can start laying out our form boards because once we're square, we can square each corner from there. Once that is done, we'll start our stakes and start running either our batter boards or because it's kind of an awkward uh, excavation site and we're doing things a little bit differently because of the size of the footings, we're gonna actually go ahead and run stakes and string lines inside our working area. And we're gonna go ahead and continue that layout board by board and set each board with our stakes and level each board with our stakes um, and our string line as we go all the way around the foundation. So with that being said, let's take a quick peek at what this foundation actually looks like. What are we building? All right, let's start with what are we building? Again, this is a house being used with four containers. So we're building a house with four eight by 40 high cube shipping containers. And this is the assembly of a typical shipping container itself. It's giving the structural components and assembly of how each container is put together. So if you guys aren't familiar with shipping containers, this is how this thing is put together to haul material. It's also a great way to use structurally to build a house because of the way these things are put together. Okay, so using that box, we're gonna take four of those and we're gonna build our foundation. And as you can see here, it's sort of a T shape. So we have three containers on the bottom. And if you see that line in the middle, there are the four interior footings. That line represents two containers, one right next to another with both of those walls where the line is removed. So we have to use some sort of structure to help with deflection and contain what we have removed from the container itself. Those four footings interiorly are gonna have posts. They're gonna pick up the bottom of each of those containers. The third container is turned vertically from those two. And then the fourth container is gonna go directly on top of that last container sitting vertically to the other two. So that is how our foundation is going to shape up. Literally, ha ha, ha ha And round and round we go. Set stake, square it up, set string line, level it, set the form, stake it, level the form, double check, and keep moving until we have all the outside forms finished for our footing. Then we come back and we'll run the interior ones because it's a lot easier to double check those dimensions once the outside form is set.
All right, that's a wrap on part one of how to build a foundation. Stay tuned for part two coming very, very soon. Make sure you guys like the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe if you have not, making sure you can follow along with not only this project, but all of the videos that are coming out on how to build. Until next time, guys, build safe, build smart, and keep building. Más abajo, pa, sí. Más abajo no va a dar el la medida. Perfecto. Ahora sí le pongo.